My name is Chad Sider, and I'm a uh, composer. Well, I first started, uh, you know, I first started back in like uh, 2003. I lived in Michigan, and I, I wanted to get started, and I had a chance to work with composer uh, Michael Giacchino. And I, I was living with a f uh, friend, and, and he said, you know, you should just, uh, you should just move to Los Angeles and get started. And I thought, well, okay. So <laughs> I, I literally packed up my car, uh, started packing my car, and a couple, uh, within a month, I had moved out from Michigan and just jumped right into it. Um, well, I've always been I've always been interested in video games. Um, I've played them since I was a kid. Uh, I guess I kind of never really expected to make it a, a profession, but uh, it, as soon as I started getting going with them, it, it became very natural and everything. Uh, I uh, I had worked. Uh, Michael used to score a lot of video games, so I had an opportunity to kind of watch the process with a, a bunch of uh, video game movies and write additional music to some of those which was uh, like a lot of fun, you know, and, and then from there, uh, recently we got started with the Zelda Symphony and pitched the idea to Nintendo. And uh, that's kind of, that, that's kind of fun because I've been able to take all my experience I've learned from film and apply it to some of my favorite Zelda melodies. <laughs> On the technical side, they're very different because film and television is very linear, uh, where video games are, are much more nebulous in the process. It's, it's constantly growing, but uh, where I would say it's exactly the same is, uh, for me, everything comes down to story, and it comes down to how you tell the story. And so, uh, for me, it's really not that different because I look at the content and I think, how can I tell this story properly? I don't really think of it as this, I need to write some action music, now I have to write some suspense music. I kind of just look at it as, where are we in the game? What's going on? And, and I make sure that everyone has their own character themes and everything ties together. Michael is the original composer of the uh, 2009 Star Trek, uh, and I loved his score, so I had great material to start with. I basically, uh, when starting the score, wanted to make sure that uh, it worked together with his score. That being said, it's a little different because you know we're we're still different uh, musicians, but. I think that the heart of it is there and I, I love his theme. And so I had a lot of fun, you know, weaving his theme throughout and putting in some new themes and, and uh, it was just a, a, just a great process. And, and I think that as a result of working so closely together, it, it, it turned out really great. And you don't normally see that in these kind of video game movie sort of hybrids. We weren't sure what the project was at first. We thought maybe it was like a mobile game, which we had done before. And I, I went over to Paramount and, and met with uh, Brian Miller, and he takes me into the Paramount Theater and shows me the, his pre the, the pe previous E3 demo. And I remember watching it just, wow. My, my jaw hit the floor. The Gorn were attacking, and the Enterprise is getting bombarded with missiles. And, and, uh, and I just thought, I can't wait to do this. And I called Michael and said, it's pretty huge. And he said, oh, sweet. Well, let's have fun with this. So. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I feel like I, I kind of did that with Star Trek. I, uh, I, I remember when Michael called me, I was just so excited. I'd, I'd never been so excited to work on a project before. Um, and then after having gotten to work on Zelda, I don't know, it would be fun to do like a Final Fantasy game. I would have a lot of fun with that. Or uh, I'm, a, I'm a big, uh, I've, I've always loved the Japanese game franchise, like franchises like Castlevania and, and all those. I would love to work on some of those. <laughs> Seeing Zelda performed live at first was very nerve-wracking because 
we were still working out technical bugs. On the theatrical side, you have a whole new set of things to worry about. But thankfully, the music always turned out really nicely, and uh, I'm very fortunate to have gone on tour with this for, I think I, I saw, oversaw like 30 shows. I don't really travel with it anymore, but um, I got to see some of the greatest orchestras. Uh, the Royal Philharmonic um, was absolutely phenomenal. The Tokyo Philharmonic, and, and uh, it's been a really, really great learning experience for me to see so many orchestras do uh, interpret the same material differently. It's been, you know, it's, a, it's an orchestral boot camp. All the orchestras, uh, all of them have different attitudes towards it, and you, you've always got the handful of grumpy players who don't want to be there, but by and far, um, I've found that the musicians are all, always really excited um, when uh, these kind of, as they call them, pops shows come up. And uh, in particular on Zelda, they seem to really enjoy it because they've got this big grandiose film score approach to it and, and I, I kind of make sure everyone has their moment so everyone gets a workout in the orchestra. They're usually very tired afterwards, particularly the brass. We're actually working on season two of Symphony of the Goddesses um, with uh, new material, uh, about 30 minutes of new material from a lot of the mobile games, the smaller games and and some Skyward Swords stuff in there too.